this is what the project was. Um, I'll introduce ourselves in a second, but as we're on this slide, um, it was a, a community arts project commissioned by Culture Coventry that Tan coordinated, and it worked with four different community groups that the community um, panel at Herbert at Culture Coventry um, uh, actually identified. So um, Matt worked with um, Coventry Refugee and Migrant Centre, a men's group. Um, I work with Exeter Unity, an Asian women's group in Foes Hill. Um, Matt worked with Foes Hill Children's Centre, families there. And I work with adult learners at Charles Moore Community Centre. But we both work with Gemma Foy as well, uh, who's not able to be here today, but she's from Let's Animate. So we will be sharing some of her uh, work with um, the groups as we um, near the end. Right, so this is who we are. Um, we're the Very Idea Artists Collective. We're two visual artists of a, a group of four artists um, from different art forms that work um, in a really sort of open, um, sort of child or adult-led way um, to actually um, keep, at, keep the ideas flowing and to make sure it is centred on the groups that we're working with and the families that we're working with or whoever we're working with. Um, I don't know, Matt's going to speak a little bit more about that um, when we go along. So this was the aims of the project. So it was to broaden participation and engagement in Coventry's local community and to gather stories and artefacts for display that, that told those, um, um, included those memories. It was, it, we, we needed to create co-curated community. That's a big, that's a tongue twister, isn't it? create co-curated community displays, celebrating the diverse voices of Coventry and sharing the stories of local people. Um, and it was to tour around different community venues and culture Coventry sites. Um, I've mentioned that the panel identified the groups that we work with and um, we were commissioned to deliver, it was actually six workshops per group. So it, wasn't, it was a great project that we were able to build relationships. Um, one of the things we did find is um, sometimes we were sort of well into the, the project work with the groups and those relationships were building and then um, we found that the groups were disappointed that it was coming to an end. Um, so there was a bit of pressure to get, um, to, to create some pieces, uh, but the process was really important as well. And we, we worked with each community group to create images and objects that represent locals, local people's stories, memories and heritage. So I'll hand over to Matt, who's going to Good talk day. about um, the type of approach that we have. So, um, thanks. Uh, so as Barbara said, our approach is very um, open-ended and um, relies on sort of, I guess, extracting the creativity out of the, the people we're working with in a very free and like, open way. Um, and uh, at the start of the, pro the project, one of our main sort of discussions between... Uh, between ourselves and with uh, Tan and uh, Gemma, who is the other artist, um, were like, how do we draw stories and um, memories out of some of the groups? Because uh, obviously with two-year-olds, they're sort of pre-verbal and uh, um, not really able to articulate in a, a, a sort of a clear way what their memories are or what they like or their stories either. So um, we sort of... I guess we did struggle a bit, didn't we, with uh, just how we did this. But, yeah, uh, we had lots of um, discussions, didn't we? Yeah. And it, there was, but uh, the reason we were commissioned um, was because we had that o very open, flexible approach, yeah. so, um, as time confirmed. So, <laughs> so um, with the, uh, this is Gosford Park Children's Centre, um, and uh, had a group of um, uh, up to 10 families being involved, uh, mostly with well, six-month-olds to two, three-year-olds, uh, and mostly their mums, but, although we did have one dad who came along as well. Um, and it's just providing materials for them to expl explore and play with, um, and uh, sort of connecting that thing about the, s the stories. It turned out that um, it was really easier to like, gather the evidence of play and they g gather the evidence of their experience. and. Uh, um, so as the sessions developed, this is what, what I did or what, what happened. Um, so that's quite self-explanatory, just showing the clay. Uh, 
So, um, as I said, it's all about the experience uh, that the children might have in using these materials um, and capturing that in something that's uh, sort of a finished product is uh, quite difficult, uh, although it was done. So the picture on the left is just um, uh, the gatherings of all these explorations of the children at the end of the, uh, end of the session. Um, so it's quite difficult to see the pictures, actually, isn't it? So this is the children exploring tissue paper. Uh, and then slide doesn't go, go on. Um, and as the session is carried on, it, uh, there was a real um, uh, sort of desire to explore different materials and see what the possibilities of these materials were. Um, the parents were quite uh, good at just trying things out themselves and the children, uh, there's quite a lot of learning between the children and the parents. Like the, the children obviously were quite happy just to, um, like in the previous slide, throw bits of tissue paper up in the air and uh, rip it up and uh, um, whereas the uh, parents were equally free but they maybe had a sort of more of a um, outcome type of uh, idea sort of so maybe making like the headdress for the children or things like that um, and uh, it was <laughs> each uh, at the end of each session um, so basically just ask them what what the, the uh, parents and the children would like to explore in the in the following week so uh, uh, they wanted they asked for paint <laughs> and uh, so the, the nature of my approach, it wasn't about sort of trying to get them to uh, paint a, uh, a masterpiece, but it was about exploring the materials, which uh, they very much did. Th this mum uh, was completely happy for her little boy just to um, pour the paint and uh, is even tasting the toothbrush and all sorts, as, as well as the six-month-old. So it got quite... Uh, quite expressive, shall we say. I think that was the best word for it. Um, but again, sort of focusing on those uh, ideas of really free, open-ended exploration, um, which children of this age are just brilliant at. There's no sort of trouble. You, you don't, don't really need to teach them how to uh, explore materials. Um, so, yeah. Uh, and out of this process, I, I guess there were sort of some real like elements of um, uh, elements of beauty, I guess, or elements of um, some sort of things that could be extracted and could uh, could be displayed. So um, uh, that reflected the experiences the children are having. So um, Again, it might not look like a masterpiece, but the, the, that piece of clay on the right uh, with the beads in and the, just the clay with the teaspoons in were real sort of... Uh, um, just showed a moment in the children's exploration and uh, uh, enjoyment of the session. Um, so again, with that idea of trying to have something to present just to demonstrate the story of the, the journey that children went through, um, I made this sculpture that sort of hopefully reflected the, uh, the sessions um, and the time that was had. Uh, feel free to ask questions as I go along as well. Cause, uh, is there anything I've missed, do you think? Was no, it no, I think it, because it was about creative play, wasn't it? And, yeah. And, and the dilemma that we faced, the challenge, was how to get an end product. So we knew the process was always the product. Um, and for the children, obviously, that's the most important thing, is the experience. Mm. Um, but we knew that there needed to be something to display. So um, yeah. um, the little bottles are sort of evidence of, of their explorations, aren't they, that are packaged yeah. there as a set. But they are on display at the Transport Museum in the exhibition. Um, but Obviously, they, they reflect that freedom of, yeah. of play and exploration that Matt's yeah. already said, yeah. So, um, so the, the bottles there, the, the uh, 
children just love playing with those and uh, each one of them has got a different materials that, that they explored and uh, used within the session. So we've got string, um, bits of tissue paper, bits of foam, uh, some clay and some paint as well. Uh, and then this thing at the top is uh, uh, sort of um, a collection of uh, all the explorations, some of the uh, adults as well, so the clay and the uh, mixing the paint. Um, again, you can't really see the, the colours in that, but uh, again, hopefully reflecting the experience that's had. Uh, so, um, so that was the approach that happened with the uh, Children's Centre. And uh, as I said, sort of the approach that the very idea likes to employ. Um, so we're trying to transfer this to working with the uh, Coventry Refugee and Migrant Centre, the men's group, um, and uh, sort of presented a whole lot of different types of um, challenges, I guess. So I think the next slide is this. Uh, actually, I might go click on a bit. Um, yeah. So uh, this is a whole... I've never worked with this, a group of, uh, like this before, so my experience is working with galleries, um, uh, children, centres, schools, uh, and communities. So I'd never up until this point actually worked with, uh, with a men's group, uh, as it were, and um, uh, or with a group with such a sort of diverse background. So um, uh, it was trying to use our, our approach, but uh, it very quickly became clear that uh, um, I guess the focus of the group, the focus of why people were in, in the space uh, was very different. Was, uh, people went to the group so, um, because there was, there was uh, clothing available, uh, there was food available, uh, and um, uh, it was clear that the focus was on just uh, sort of more basic needs in terms of um, survival, I guess. So uh, turning up with a bunch of open-ended materials to try and uh, get people to just play and explore wasn't really very sort of high on the pr priorities of uh, what their interests were. So uh, this was quite a challenge because, um, uh, again, it was focusing on very... Uh, um, or the uh, like intangible things that couldn't be shown through a piece of work. So, uh, so that's why I've taken a picture of the shoes <laughs> uh, uh, and the clothes um, and uh, just the, the picture at the top is just um, some of the clothes. They obviously didn't have a choice of the clothes that were there. So uh, this chap who was quite sort of... Uh, about my build, he found these pair of jeans, which were like for, a, um, by the looks of it, a seven foot uh, <laughs> sort of wide and high person. So uh, he was just um, cutting them down and uh, sewing them up. Uh, so I think that just sort of showed the, the, the focus of what the, uh, what the people turn up to the, the sessions for. Um, so yeah, uh, having said that, uh, it was a very positive experience. Um, again, you can see from the, the picture, it's like... Uh, uh, so, so they might have been going for food and for clothing, but they were also going for friend... Sorry, yeah. Sort of going for um, building relationships and friendships. Sorry, have you got a question? Yeah. Can you just say very briefly what this invention... Yeah, OK. The dropping, yeah, yeah, okay. Sorry, I didn't say uh, so. This is um, it happens every Tuesday, it's a few hours um, in the afternoon, uh, and it's a group that was set up about eight years ago, nine years ago. By um, uh, and it's uh, just a space for um, men basically, uh, refugee and migrants, uh, but also homeless actually. Quite, uh, just to go and um, meet, get food, uh, clothing. And they, um, do they sign post services as well? I think. Yeah, they, they give them a signed, bit of yeah. So it was a. Yeah. Um, so they're, they're refugees from. So they're, they're 
Uh, all over, yeah. So um, the, the chap who, uh, the two people who cr uh, created the group, um, uh, one was from uh, Peru originally. I can't remember where the other one was from, but, uh, uh, but yeah, all over. So. Um, uh, Well, this is the thing. So the the, um, the the sessions I led were very much within the the group. So um, there might be it varied massively. So there might be like 20, 30 people coming to the group um, to the space. But then uh, there's lots of other distractions. So there's like a table tennis going on and and uh, the food, as I say, and the um, clothing. So. Uh, and it's just quite, it was quite hard to engage people. So it's like the um, experience I had was like of bringing things along that, that people would want to um, be involved with. Uh, and it's also about building a, rela uh, a sort of a friendship or a relationship with the, the people. And because there's quite an uh, uncertain sort of uh, existence of many of them, uh, they might not turn up every week. They might like uh, sort of come for one session, get really involved, uh, make something amazing. Uh, like this chap, sort of really fantastic drawing, and he was involved like for a few hours, or well, a couple of hours doing this. Uh, but then I never saw him again. So it's like it's really sort of quite um, sort of challenges to the to, because again our approach sort of really relies on developing a relationship and uh, understanding the people who are involved with the group. So, um, so despite those challenges, uh, as I say, it was a really positive place to be. Yeah. Can I ask you, yeah. what did you tell them or ask them that this was about? You know, you know, you didn't say this is about art, this is about therapy. What, how did you present to them? Uh, the chap, the yeah. chap who coordinate. Sorry, the question was about how to get the participants involved or the, the men involved. Um, there was a chap who was who uh, who created the group. He's very very enthusiastic about just saying, "Oh, here, like Matt's turned up. He's got all these materials. Come and get involved and make and uh, get involved." But there was a real uh, stand backish sort of. Um, I guess I lack some, of confidence yeah. to get involved, really, because there, there was a language barrier as yeah. well, I suppose, and yeah. and and I think at the st at the initial planning meeting, um, the rep from the migrant centre said, "We've had lots of people coming in with suitcases of objects for, for you to tell us the memories linked with these," and they yeah. said, "We don't really want to see any more suitcases to because." I suppose, really, some things they don't want to remember because a lot of newly arrived migrant there's a, men. Well, there's a yeah, whole combination. There was newly arrived, and then there was people who've been here for yeah. um, sort of from some, for some time. Uh, there were homeless, um, some who'd, who'd been in Coventry all their lives, but then some who'd sort of been um, travelling around the country. So it was a, a real combination, and. Uh, um, but uh, yeah, and uh, there was a. My approach wasn't to say, right, you're going to do this. It was, we've got these materials here, come and get involved. Uh, and um, it seemed that the clay was a real, uh, a real draw to gently getting people involved. So um, this was made by a chap uh, from East Uganda. Uh, obviously, a really quite creative. Uh, skilled um, at making this model uh, and uh, yeah the clay just seemed to be a really good way of involving uh, sort of slowly getting people involved um, and developing those relationships over the time so I realize I've talking for quite a long time now but, um, yeah. no it's fine uh, <laughs> So yeah, as I say, the clay was a, proved to be a real good basis for. So I'd set it up on a table, and then people would be able to come over, sort of under their own will. But uh, as a consequence, it meant that people 
didn't feel too challenged that they would have to be doing something. Um, and then, uh, obviously, conversations emerged from, from, this, from the make and uh, uh, a real amazing range of stuff. The, the top second from the right is uh, just a, was a snake just made from sort of squashing clay in the hand. Um, So, so the clay, but also there was uh, um, just other materials taken along. So the pencils and uh, sketch pads, uh, which were the they were um, free to take away and like use in between the sessions. So uh, this chap was um, a, a writer. He, he, um, he said he liked writing. And he would uh, just take these. They're only small luggage labels, but like almost do these uh, amazing uh, essays and observations on them. I never got a photo, and I, I, I never felt I could actually um, sort of ask him to, if I could read them. So, uh, but he he actually was quite a consistent uh, a, attendee, and he would um, take some labels and then come back uh, and take some more the next week. Um, so I'll just put that in because it's sort of show, again sort of showing how our approach is quite um, open for everyone to sort of follow their own interests really. Uh, and I think that's the last one of me. So if there's any other questions, I don't know. Hopefully I've explained that a bit. <laughs> Yeah, it did, because um, the group was so diverse. And uh, as I think on one of the slides I said, it's like there's a, one chap talking about um, uh, his experience of um, finding the clay in the riverbed, uh, I think in, well, in Uganda. And there's another chap who, from uh, Zimbabwe as well. Uh, then there's a, gu a guy from Coventry who's talking about his experience of clay um, making something for his mum when he was at primary school, sort of just around the corner. So yeah, there's a real diversity and uh, sort of, yeah, building of, again, building of friendships and uh, connections with people. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. I just have a question in terms of the material and the kind of freedom and, and expression. Yeah. Yeah, it was, uh, no, I, I guess my approach, well, we just take the similar sort of materials each week and then if, uh, so yeah, there's the drawing and we had wire one week and uh, the clay and yeah, so it's sort of take them each week and then they know that they're going to be there as opposed to um, sort of something completely different, so and then yeah. And in advance, what materials you were taking? Sorry? Did, did they know in advance what materials you were taking? Uh, I think they got to... Um, got an understanding of what sort of materials would be coming e each week, yeah, so. They um, enjoyed the photography as well, didn't they? You took, yeah. Yeah, they were well into the photography and you took yeah. the cameras too, yeah. Yeah, there was a chap who was, I think, doing a, um, a course at Coventry uh, who um, had access to all the cameras in the department, I don't know, but he, he took those along and they, they were a real draw to them, so... Um, uh, and that was great because that just sort of combined with what we were doing. So that was one of the great best ses sessions, in fact. So, um, yeah, yeah, and that's something, yeah, that's something with that. If there had been sort of consistent attendance, we could have explored, but it was, it was always difficult. So, yeah. Any other questions? Can move on to Barbara. I feel like I've talked oh, yeah. to Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. That's all right. Thank you. I hope it was clear. That's yeah. That's all right. um, yeah, so it, there were different challenges working with um, the women's group at Act Unity. Um, but also an amazing experience working with this group because they were so enthusiastic. Um, so I think that's just a bit of an explanation of who Acts Unity are. But they meet 
um, several times a week at um, St Paul's Community Church in Foes Hill and they offer lots of different groups. So we sort of gate crashed in on one of their groups. We followed on from yoga. I think um, that was amazing. It was a, the church hall was full of yoga, um, people doing yoga. And then we sort of were on the sideline needing to set up. Um, so there a lot stayed from the yoga through to the afternoon session that we worked with. I'm saying we because I worked alongside Gemma for this. Um, because the numbers were so um, great, there was up to 70 um, attended, um, we needed to, to um, work alongside each other. So Gemma was offering animation workshops and I was offering other visual arts um, explorations to try and bring, in, bring out members' stories and memories and heritage. Um, so fantastic group of um, a big group of people and um, where were we going to start and you can see straight away when we ask people what are your expectations the end product was the first thing that was down so as Matt's talked about our, pr our process quite a bit um, end products always happen um, but because it's about building relationships and it's about um, ownership we don't always know what the end product is going to be so it's always a bit scary when we're working in this sort of open way um, we might have sort of ideas that can set people um, off with their own ideas um, but they wanted to learn new skills they use new technology um, with especially with the the animation and they wanted to renew skills so they were a very talented group of, of women and and also to to recognize members skills um, it was certainly a hands-on experience and they enjoyed being part of this citywide um, project that Culture Coventry had, had um, involved them in. So Gemma was um, commissioned to explore animation. Um, and then as a visual artist, uh, my brief was to explore uh, creative ways to capture the stories and the memories, as we've previously said. And we were looking to possibly a range of small handheld 2D or 3D objects from different materials and they needed to, to be uh, able to go on open display. Um, as we've mentioned, our approach is really open, so how would it fit? Um, we did sort of meet up with some of the members and um, identified that their, their interests and skills are in sewing, embroidery, knitting and storytelling. Um, so that was a, a good starting point. Um, but how did we actually start to get them to think about how a piece of artwork could tell a story or share a memory. So we did show them other artists' work, um, these box constructions from Joseph Cornell, of, of how you can capture memories and feelings and associations through, through different objects and um, materials. So this was a bit of a... I mean, everything needed to be quite visual because there was a bit of a a language barrier and so whenever we were introducing anything and or making some suggestions or or talking about our approach um, we needed to to show visual references but also we had um, the group had somebody that would translate for us so um, we followed on after the yoga we had to sort of get in the translation introduction and set up they were so enthusiastic they were coming around to to get going um, straight away as soon as we entered the hall and um, we had sort of maybe about 40 minutes of the workshop um, sort of which we thought would, might be about two hours um, but then there was always they were so welcoming this group there was always food there was always something to celebrate there was always a celebration going on as you'll see in one of these pictures so um, there was a bit of pressure in terms of time as to how we could fit things in um, but it, it did mean that um, we did, um, sort of, because they were so enthusiastic, we did, we did get there. We did, we did arrive at um, some products at the end. Um, so, again, these were sort of showing how other artists like Peter Blake show objects, um, use objects in their work and materials that can tell stories and um, be a memory of a place, an event or a time. Oh, sorry. And then just a piece of my work, which was um, reminding um, of, of different people and, and memories. Um, and I have got, but you won't be able to see them in the dark, 
um, we did we did show um, some work that's some of the work that's in the Herberts. There's two walks by Les Bicknell, which is an artist book. Um, it's sometimes on display in the Herbert. So afterwards, if you want to come and have a look, it's a it's a different sort of of book. This is so. Um, I'll, I'll mention that again in a minute. So, um, so how did we start? Um, Gemma and I collaborated on what we could offer, and we often offer provocations to start triggering memories and stories and ideas. Um, but a lot of the objects I might have had, I, I, as an artist, I collect loads of stuff. So um, we managed to put together some collections of stuff that might start people's ideas and memories and stories. Um, starting to um, ignite those ideas and um, responses, um, initial responses were quite good so if you want to read those sort of um, feedbacks about it. So lots of things in common with the, ob the object shared across different cultures and different places and they were brilliant at playing and exploring because um, because um, although um, the age group I'm, I mean I've worked with people in this similar sort of age group before and um, their enthusiasm was just amazing they just threw themselves into it and there was lots of discussion and talk amongst themselves and they were all very supportive um, so it was it's easy in that respect um, I think the difficulty was because there was so much stuff coming out of it how do you capture it all with the language barriers as well, how do you actually capture it? And this was the first session we were celebrating Nordi, um, which is the birth of the first, grand, first child, um, which is the grandson of one of the members. So we had lovely food at the end of the session, and we just captured a few shots of them dancing and clapping and, and um, singing at the end to celebrate just a small group of the members. So it was, it was um, a really celebratory um, sort of place to work. Um, members started bringing in, because Gemma and I said, we don't know if they're going to bring anything in. You know, often, like, you know, we've worked in schools and things like that. You never know if um, people are going to come back with, with um, any things to share. Um, we were really de depending on this, really, because we needed to get their stories and their memories. And we did find that people did start bringing things in. So there's a 100-year-old textile piece um, that was hand-embroidered. And so we started to get the stories um, and the memories linked with these pieces. They were often made by family members or themselves. And we could also see the range of expertise and talents and skills these people had. Um, Cross Stitch was one of the um, amazing pieces. And they obviously take um, a long time to, to learn these skills and also to share them. And you can see the bottom, bottom right, that lady's holding a fan. Um, I've not seen that, I don't know if you've seen them. Um, like a football rattle, you twirl them like a football rattle and they make them. Um, and so there's all sorts of objects um, and things that were, were um, appearing to share and to show. Um, but aside of the things that were coming in to tell us stories, we, we needed to offer some sort of making um, possibility and, and exploring the material. So, so books were thought of as a possible way of containing the stories and um, we shared them various artist books. So this is one that's in the Herbert, as I've mentioned, Les Bicknell's um, Two Walks books, which I can pass around. We showed them fabric books, so we showed them how a book can be anything you want it to be, really, um, and how it can contain a story. Even if there's no words, it can still be... Um, it can still be holding a story with the materials that are used. So we, we, um, I offered to start a workshop to explore bookmaking. Um, we used some handmade papers from India, so some really nice tactile materials, and there was lots of enthusiasm in, in um, trying that out. And then um, really responding to what we knew their interests were was in... Um, sewing and embroidery and um, various knitting and crocheting skills. Um, we, we sort of developed the idea of fabric books because we knew that members would have, if they did lots of sewing, they'd have lots of remnants of fabric. And um, if anybody else in the room has done sewing, you've probably got bits of um, fabrics. 
Um, somebody's laughing and nodding here. You've probably got lots of fabrics, have you, Reverend? So you, you're hoarding them, a bit like me, probably. But every time you go and dip into that bag, I don't know, do you think of something that you made, somebody you made that for, or where it was worn, or an occasion or event? So, so that was what we were looking for, really, um, is how you could use uh, materials in that way to, to tell a story and that would hold a memory. So um, members started bringing in their own materials um, and fabrics and started developing their pages. And they worked brilliantly in, in groups. Because um, again, Matt said his group wasn't so consistent. There were some people, because uh, it was a time of year where it was good to go off to India. Um, so we suddenly didn't have the same people. But they worked really well collaboratively in groups. and. Um, so it didn't matter if somebody wasn't there one week, somebody else would pick up, up the work and, and carry on. And so they started to um, get a real sense of ownership of the, the work, which was really important in the process, and um, um, sort of build up these fabric books. At the same time, they continued to bring in all these amazing um, textile pieces and objects that um, um, shared their heritage and their stories and Gemma used some of those in the animation work. We, we, started, we always photographed the pieces because obviously they were quite precious and um, we couldn't hold them, but we always took photographs of them. So the fabric books um, sort of developed on. People bought sewing machines in because they decided... I mean, they're not, they're not like um, real pieces. They're, they're pieces of art, but they're not pieces that show... Um, their sewing skills to the best because obviously they're group pieces, we had limited time, um, so they're not a piece of expert embroidery but they're about how those materials that they chose and how that collaboration can produce something that's um, holding memories and stories. So the atmosphere was really buzzing. Um, I didn't really have to lead anything. I was just, you know, finding different needles and pins and, and have you got this and have you got that? So, I, I just, in the end, I just thought, I can't, you know, I just need to stand back um, and be the f more, of, more of a lower facilitator than um, sort of trying to, because to, um, I didn't need to, because they were just away with it. So it was a really busy, busy buzzing um, atmosphere. Um, so again, more pieces came in, um, and it was... Gemma and I were saying, well, what can we do with these pieces? Because they're amazing and we don't want to lose, um, you know, a record of these. How can these be built into something um, that shared those memories as, as a piece of artwork rather than just the, the photographs? Um, so I made a suggestion that um, maybe some of those photos could be shown in miniature boxes, a bit like the um, Cornell boxes and Peter Blake work that we showed at the start of the presentation. Um, I suppose in my head I had, this is, this is where we could go, because obviously we were um, asked to consider producing handheld 2D or 3D objects of a certain size that would fit a certain display and would be durable and portable to go on tour. So we had certain um, requirements in the backs of our heads that we needed to fit in with, um, but they, they went for the idea of these miniature boxes that would share um, the photos and photos of the work um, and they became mini museums of memories that was, that's the title that we decided between us um, and we thought maybe we'll do two or three of these boxes but we, they decided we needed to do more <coughs> we needed to do five so um, um, we'll see those in a minute I think we're okay on time are there any questions at this point are you, are you okay for me to Continue, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because this group, because I suppose this is this is sort of quite a few years on from the group that Matt worked with. Um, although he said some had lived in Coventry for a long time. Um, some were fairly new to Coventry, whereas this group had been here quite a few decades. So it, there was um, 
sort of another generation of people that their children had grown up and even their grandchildren were grown up in Coventry. So you're nodding there. You know the, the families better and the group better than I do, probably. Um, yeah, so, so it was really, working with this group was to really show, um, well, it showed me what a fantastic community they had. It was, it was really inclusive, it was open, but they were so supportive to each other and they were so welcoming to Gemma and myself and anybody that, that visited. Um, and and it, that was what came out of it for me. Um, I sort of recorded on here, it was a delight and inspiration to facilitate the work um, and they were probably the most motivated and creative group of people I've ever worked with. Um, they were really inspiring, driven, full of ideas and enthusiasm, enthusiasm and really generous with the sharing of their ideas and, and collaborating. So um, it, it, it was really an example of, of people that have um, lived in the community, lived in Coventry for a long time, um, but still um, supporting each other, still still needing to access and share their culture and their memories from quite, quite a way, you know, quite a few years ago. Yeah. Oh, well, there'd be more challenges there. Yeah, it was easy to. Yeah. There was new members joining the group all the time, um, but yeah, there was because it was a big group as well. They were very supportive um, of each other. Um, yeah. So we're really, really lucky to be involved. Sorry. Yeah, th there was, yeah, yeah, it was mostly, um, but there were all, all ages <coughs> as well, and there was um, a child that got involved, I think, in the last, somebody's grand, on the left top picture there, somebody's granddaughter came in because it was half term yeah, or something. A lot more handicraft, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and they talked about this. They talked about the diaries that they'd all... And a lot, a lot of these pieces were, were, the, were family members or themselves had, had made, created for their diaries. And they would work on those for quite a long time um, in, terms of, um, in terms of some of the pieces that were brought in. Um, I've got a little story. Yeah, the, gar the girls would start learning in their childhood about sewing and other craft skills. Um, and it was a natural way of learning with all the female members of the family engaged in the making. They would do other chores in the morning and in the afternoon they would sit in the shade, sewing, singing and dancing together. The young girls would perhaps make dolls clothes or other toys first and the work for the diary would be made over a long period and show whatever handiwork the bride had made herself or wanted to include and there would be a minimum of seven, or it would be at seven or minimum of five sets of bed linen made, some for the summer and some for the winter. The quilts would be filled with cotton from the local fields and hand spun. Work might include crochet, embroidery, mirror work and baskets. Um, to make the baskets, the leaves from the bamboo plants would be left to dry by the fire, then cut and split and woven into baskets. The bride's diary would be taken to the groom's family house after the marriage ceremony and sometimes displayed. So it was, with stories like that that we were... Um, and, and that was why there was this real interest in sewing, because it linked back to the, um, the years that they'd sort of been involved in, in, in that um, activity. Um, we had a final display, um, a pop-up exhibition, and the animation film was shared. And um, the stuff, the, the beautiful pieces still continued to arrive in the last session, so um, we were still there's still lots of pieces being brought in that we managed to share in some way in the mini museums. So just to flick through quickly, because I think we, we've got the animation film to show oh, yeah. of Gemma's. So these are the snippets of remnants of fabrics that hold memories for people. So they wanted to make a sewing kit, this group, so, um, and that's what they decided to do with it as a group. The... Um, Top left, 
Um, the bright red fabric with the gold foil decoration, um, I don't think that's on there actually, is often used as a backdrop for weddings. So there was lots of memories of, of wedding celebrations there. Um, that top left is, um, when I married I wore a sari and a scarf like this. And the one on the right, and the book cover, and that was used as a book cover, was created um, using this richly embellished sleeve of a garment that reminded them of Asian wedding suits worn by brides and their families. And the bottom picture um, was fabric that um, had been used to make, make a covering for the member's temple. And it always also reminded a member of the colour of a suit like this they'd worn in the past. So lots of um, shared memories of these types of fabrics as well. And then I'll just flick through. So these were the mini museums, quite a bit of some, uh, light on that one on the right, you can't sort of see quite so clearly, but the photos and, and sort of details of the, the work and the objects were shown inside them. So, um, oh, well, we can go on to the film in a minute. Yeah. So is there any questions from, from that? I know people have been pulling questions. Is it, does it make sense, the, um, the way the, the project sort of evolved to the pieces? Um, what, did you, what did you see you learned? Oh, loads. <laughs> 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 loads, yeah. So, I mean, one of the things, as I mentioned, was to stand back, you know. Um, <laughs> And Matt's very good at standing back. <laughs> um, I have to keep telling myself I need to, to, to let go and, um, and just let and give space and time for people to, to own the process and actually bring their ideas in. So, because sometimes um, when there's expectations that an artist is coming in and you're going to lead an activity and you're going to create something for display, there needs to be um, pr this pressure on the artist. To, to actually produce something. Um, but this was just a joy because um, the pressure was taken away because of the enthusiasm um, with this group of, of women. We've got um, very quickly, oh, sorry, there's another question. Oh, we have got an evaluation. Um, I'm just not sure. Perhaps if I, sh can I show the, f the films and see if that, but, but we've, we have got quite a full evaluation from it um, and they, they were very um, proud that their work was going to be shared publicly so they were very pleased to um, be involved in the project in that respect um, and I think it was just an opportunity to share their, their memories and their stories and their culture and their heritage with uh, a lot, actually there were some pieces donated to the Herbert which I think Tan's picked up on um, because they want people in the wider community to be aware of um, this, <coughs> this rich diversity and this rich culture that's, um, um, you know, sort of centres around this group, so. And then, and over, and across all the groups, the uh, feedback was just to have more sessions because yeah. it was a, a, obviously a limited uh, project in terms of time that could be offered, but they all just loved it and wanted to do more, but sadly not possible at this time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I think so, because um, uh, the families certainly did, didn't they? I mean, yeah. they all did, but the families yeah. um, were, I mean, their feedback showed that they just wanted, so they were very excited to be coming. I think Gemma had one session where they actually you know, they couldn't get because of transport, but they were so keen to get there because of the ownership of the project that they got a taxi. Yeah, they got a taxi, yeah. yeah. And it was about, it's about the process. Um, products are great, but it's about that process, that relationship building um, within the group. Yeah. 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 And even the actor group, actor unity group that knew each other quite well, um, they would still be sharing stories and um, reaffirming, you know, sort of links and connections with each other. So it um, was an opportunity. 
They did they they did other art projects before, but they said they'd never done one quite like this and um, um, how positive it was. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's the time to show the animation, or do we want to show it as people are leaving? Um, it's eight it's minutes, but we we can have it running and and. <laughs> Yeah, so this is Gemma's work, and um, it's across all four of the groups that we work with. And um, I think it's going to start in a minute, so I'll stop. Um, you'll, you'll see there's voiceovers, so it's the actual um, children or the adult learners that are um, doing the voiceovers. So you might need to listen carefully to some of it. 